What is going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope you're having a good one. Uh, not a not a great night uh, for DFS last night for me. I did not uh, I I did not do anything basically at all. So it was uh, frustrating. And then I bubbled the monster on FanDuel, which is my only lineup over there. So not my night. Um, I did try to avoid the, the chalky Atlanta, and it didn't. It looked like it was going to work for the first four innings, and then boy, did it not work. Um, anyway, Sheets, how did you do? You, I know you had a better night than I did, but uh, talk about that, and then we'll jump into slate. Yeah, for me, less was more because I, I put very little work into it. Um, I, I, uh, I, I updated my projections. I identified the teams I wanted to play, the pitchers I wanted to play. That was going to be Bieber and Ian Anderson along with Tampa and Philly um, and some Dodgers. I ended up just going with Tampa, Philly, Bieber and Anderson. And I, you know, I didn't even I had to go out. So I didn't even really get a chance to check. The, the weather where I probably would have gotten off of Bieber because everybody else seemed to have known to get off of all the Cleveland stuff, given the news that was out there. So I just kind of just had Bieber and I guess fortunate enough that I was able to get four literally perfect innings out of him <laughs> for, yeah. uh, for he threw like 50 pitches and he had 19 fantasy points at 50 pitches. Right. Uh, um, and he, if they let him in for like two more batters, he would have gotten the win. Right. Yeah. Um, but in any case, I ended up, um, I ended up cashing and, you know, I played two lineups and I played everything. I played that those lineups in like everything. And I ended up cashing uh, without a single brave. So that's good because Tampa went off and, and Philly, Philly went off too at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I was, I was fortunate enough to have my, I don't say laziness. I had other things to do. But I was fortunate enough to, I uh, didn't put, I probably would have talked myself off of Bieber and onto something that, wouldn't have, wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have won if you want to know the truth. So uh, I'll put that one aside as me being lucky and we're going to move on to today. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear at least one of us did something. So, yeah. All right. Let's get into today. Uh, why don't we pull up uh, your screen? Yeah. So I'm pulling up Saber Sim um, and we're going to go game by game, but I just wanted to kind of show you kind of what, what I see when I look at this stuff. So when you do it on true DFS, it'll look a little bit different. Maybe not even because what you have when you have the Saber Sim package is you have the Saber Sim projections here. And then if you want to just use them, you could just leave it as is. But if you want to use either my my projections or anybody's, right, you could upload those into Saber Sim and it will show right next to them. You know, so here it says Saber Sim projections and my projections. And then you'll have Saber Sim ownership. And then I uploaded my own ownership based on my stuff over here um, right now, if on true DFS, it won't automatically put your own, you know, uh, uh, like the sheet, like my um, ownership projections here, you're going to have to upload those yourself. We're hopefully to get that fixed, but this is kind of what I look at. I got the Saberson here. I have my stuff over here. And this is what Saberson looks like for me. It's not exactly the same as what it looks like for the true DFS people, but pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. Um, what it does show is, is Cleveland with a 4.7 team total in the first game. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to, you want to just go game by game and we'll yeah, just. Yeah, let's go game by game. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, th this game is, is going to be easy to stay away from the pitchers. I guess you could get into Connor Pilkington if you wanted to get a little bit funny because it is the A's after all, but I would actually say. Gotta, that I'm think, sorry. You got to pause. For a okay. I'll pause. Here we go. So I was saying that, that what I've got is to try and, you know, look, it's a small slate. We want to try and get off the board if you want to win a big tournament. One of the ways to do that would be to use some of the value A's and maybe a mini stack. Um, the way I would do it probably would be uh, Pinder, Loriano, and Murphy if he's catching, or Lowry or Andrus. One of those two with Loriano and Pinder, I think, is a way you can get different on this slate. Get some low ownership and some low owner, low owned exposure. Um, I don't think I would want to go with a full stack, but I would personally be leaning to that. I think you're going to end up with more chalk by the end of the day on Cleveland than's currently being projected. And I like Cleveland. I just don't think I'm going to end up playing anything too chalky today. Maybe if you do it, Josh Naylor should be a little lower owned. You could play Stephen Kwan at the bottom of the order. Um, even Miles Straw won't be crazy owned, but Jose Ramirez, Rosario, Jimenez. Oscar Gonzalez. I think all those guys are going to be fairly popular. So I'm leaning my take on this first game is, is the A's mini stack as a way to go. 
What, what do you think of these ownership projections? Do you think that that that, that Plinkington is going to be this choppy? You think? I mean, we have, I haven't been at twenty percent. This is early, but uh, do you think he's you know people are going to play him? I don't. I mean, you could argue they might want to because you're going to have a lot of people playing the Yankees, which are expensive. Um, but I personally am okay with just. I, I think it's fine. I, I think you're, you, it's reachy a little bit at twenty percent. If it was little, if it was right. closer to ten, I would be definitely more interested. But I probably. Well, I'm, I'm just. I'm just. I'm not even talking about whether it's warranted. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying. Um, we're, we're just spitballing here. So, again, these are like early ownership projections. Even even mine are, are, are early. Yeah. I just, I'm just wondering if by the end of the day we think that whether it's a good play or not, do we think that Plinkington is going to be 20 percent, or is it, or is this probably is it probably going to be lower than this? My guess is it would be a little bit lower by the time this late. I think so. Talks. I think so. I like like for like right now, and I'm just kind of staring at this. Like I, I would. I mean, if these ownerships, let's let's just say we knew the ownerships, and 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 only only certain people could actually know the ownerships, and that's another story. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if you told me, for example, that I could get Caprillion 5% ownership, I mean, is, is he really that much worse a play? I guess maybe. Well, Cleveland just doesn't strike out like hardly at okay. all. They, they strike out less than any team in baseball. Um, okay. Caprillion has his own strikeout issues and hasn't looked good at all this season. But yeah, I, I just think it's, it's probably a little bit unnecessary risk in this on this slate. Um, and I don't know if you're getting that much by – by saving yeah. so much outside of if you want to play the Yankees as a jockey stack, I think that'll be the hard thing to do unless you pay down a pitcher. Um, with respect to Cleveland, I'm I'm actually um, I'm actually not getting them as one of my top plays. Like I, I have I have four teams that I'm I'm interested in, and Cleveland is kind of like just on the outside looking in. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's the way I, that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, I, I think that, that, that that's that's sort of where I'm at as well. Um, I do think that, you know, again, if you're going to play people, the reason people play the Pilkington is getting into our next game is because the Braves and Yankees are going to be so popular. Um, and for good reason. You have good matchups, good hitting weather, uh, really good hitting weather for, for Atlanta. And I'm sort of uh, – you know, again, it's it's going to be hard if everybody's going to be 20 percent by the end of the day. But if they stay in the teens, maybe if I mix in my ace stack, I can get different enough, which is what I tried to do yesterday when they were playing each other. Didn't quite work out. Um, almost worked out, but it didn't quite. And uh, yeah, obviously, this is a great spot for uh, for the excuse me, sorry, for the uh, the Braves. And I like Freed a ton as a pitcher. Um I think this is the kind of slate that I can stomach it a little bit easier. It's, I think I, I, I could probably afford to double spend up because there's enough chief bats where I can get in there if I'm not going to play all of Atlanta and, and, and the Yankees, which is what I think most people will do. And Freed is just a really good pitcher in a really good matchup. And I have him as my, uh, my second, my, my, tied for my second favorite pitcher on the slate. So I do like Atlanta. I'm a little concerned about the ownership. But, I mean, look, if you played the, the bottom of the Atlanta lineup yesterday, you would have been – Golden. That's what. That's what really did it. It was the Michael Harris, who's not going to be owned again. Who put up a. a what did he have? A, he had nineteen, fan, uh, twenty-one fantasy points. You had Adam Duvall with the big game, uh, and then you could play Ozuna, who's been batting seventh because he's been so terrible. He didn't have a game yesterday, but I think maybe that's if you're going to stack Atlanta, I, I would suggest stacking the the bottom end of it. So that's that's what I've got for this one. Yeah, as 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 Bobby alluded to, I mean, like the Yankees and Atlanta are the two top play. You know, two top scores from a projection perspective and you know it's a question of whether you want to eat the ownership or not and again i I just have to repeat this each each slate you know where you have chalk which is pretty much every slate but but especially on a small slate like this is that if you're going to play teams like atlanta or new york there there are several ways to do it okay number one is make sure that you play them with with non-chalk pitchers that certainly makes a lot of sense Another way to do it is to somehow play the, you know, the, the, the less chalky of that team, you know, and whether that be just, just, just not blindly, but just, just seeing who the low owned guys just playing them um, that that's another way to do it. Or um, as Bobby sometimes likes to do is to get kind of creative in your construction. Like just don't play one, two, three, four, five, you know, play one, three, five, eight, or one, two, four, nine, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Or and if you want to do something even di- more different, just, just play, just play them in one offs or play them in just two mans or something like that. 
where everybody, not everybody, but people are going to try to do five-man stacks. You know, maybe you can just get a little bit different. Like instead of playing like you're choosing between your five-man Yankee and five-man Atlanta stack, maybe play a two-man from each or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something that you can do. Um, and that's my opinion on Atlanta. I mean, like you can play them, but but don't just just don't play them with, you know, uh, you know, Cole and Otani, like for example, you know, or mm -hmm. Cole and Freed or, you know, some combination of those three, mm -hmm. you know, who are going to be the chalkiest pitcher. Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with all that. And I just think that you're going to see pretty high ownership all the way through Atlanta's order until you get to Michael Harris um, and potentially uh, potentially Adam Duvall. But I think he might even be on as well tonight. So so is this what's going to happen? So so I mean, not to get to all these games, but are people going to be able to play two of those three pitchers and then still get to Atlanta Yankees? Or is the reason why? the Plinkington is, is showing up at 20% is because people are going to probably have, try to have to play him to get to these guys. I think that's why he's showing up early in the day. Yeah. That, that I still think that you could, I mean, both guys in the last game are not that much more expensive and they both have like, you know, their median score and their, their, their upside is just so much higher. Yeah. Um, so I would rather go with, with one of the guys in the later games personally. Okay. Um, so, so what do you think about this, uh, your Yankees in Minnesota here? Because they're going to be really popular. Yep. Um, and our old friend Dylan Bundy on the other side. Yeah, I, I don't think I have that in me. Um, but well, I don't uh, want to play him. I just was throwing it out there. That, that, no, I, I. But 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 I, I'm. By the time I'm finished talking, I'm, I might I might end up talking myself into it. Um, I mean, this is this is is this GPP right? It's a five game slate, and you have three pretty obvious pitchers in Cole, Freed, and, and Otani in the, on the board here. And uh, if you want to play like Atlanta, for example, obviously you don't want to play Bundy if you want to play the Yankees, right? But if, if you want to play Atlanta, uh, you know, you, Cheats, didn't you just say that if you want to play Atlanta, one way to do it is to take non-chalky pitchers? And this is certainly one of them. I mean, this is also just insane direct leverage against the Yankees. Mm -hmm. um, so look, uh, this, this is America. You can play wherever you want, and yeah. and Bundy certainly has 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 upside. He always has, and he's I think net net. Bobby's gonna have to lose a thousand slates in a row before he gives yeah. back his Bundy money. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so uh, I won't have to talk him into it in the right spot. So I don't know. I I, I might I might consider it. Um, I will say this: if I run build and I get to him just by accident, I'm certainly not asking that. Oh, um, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and Cole is, you know, Cole is Cole, man. I mean, you, you, you play him, you play him in 13 game slates, you play him in five game slates. I mean, he's just got just, just insane strikeout upside. He's got an insane strikeout floor. He's got an, just a, a, a unlimited leash. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, and he's just, you know, one of the premier DFS pitchers there is. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's going to probably be the best play. Um, and he's probably going to be the highest owned and probably for good reason. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like to play him <laughs> yeah. again, but, but same, same as usual, you know, if you play him, you know, you, you don't want to play him with necessarily with the Yankees, you know, you don't want to play mm -hmm. necessarily with the Braves and, you know, the five game slate, it's hard, but uh, you have to sometimes make those choices. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I, I mean, obviously he's the, the safest and the highest upside pitcher on the slate. I, I do think with Bundy, I just want to point out against these, and, and they, they've had some experience as he pitched for the Orioles. So he's got over 100, 100 bats against him from this Yankee lineup. He has a 33% strikeout rate against this Yankee team. That's a, Against these if, guys, these particular guys? Yeah, against these particular okay. guys who will be in the lineup today. That's a pretty great number. Um, it's insane. <laughs> he's eight. He's 8,800, which is the part that's keeping me off of it. If, if, if they aligned for matchup and made him 6,800 or something like that, yeah, I would just be loading up on that situation and just say, okay, I'll play that. Then I can play the Braves with a low own Bundy. But I just don't see – it's hard for me to get there at 8,800 for him. Um, the no ownership, though, is appealing. So I'm, I'm still considering it. And it's interesting. The, the hitting weather is so good in this game that you actually have even, even, I mean, against Cole, they don't, you don't usually see run totals at almost four. Um, and that's what you've got for Minnesota today. So I, I, I like the Yankees. Um, I, my, I don't think you necessarily need to full stack on this site, but you can obviously the Yankees and the Braves stand out as the, the two obvious ones, but I am okay with, uh, with just taking pieces, obviously judge 
is always going to be my favorite piece from the Yankees. And uh, I think LeMahieu is too cheap. Uh, I probably would, I always skip Rizzo because his ownership is really high and he walks so much that I can just sort of, okay, I'll skip him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess maybe playing those two. And then the one guy who I do expect to be low owned is Josh Donaldson, but it's been for good reason because we haven't really seen much and yet they price him through the roof. Um, and he hasn't really done much all season long. So I, uh, I think Donaldson at low ownership would probably be the Yankee that I'm most likely to, to be overweight on. Who's going to hit the random home run for Minnesota? The weird random home run from Minnesota. You, you would think that, that Buxton would be a decent enough bet for it. Um, you got to pitch. That's not the weird random one. What? That's not the weird random one. Well, he's only going to be like 1% or 2% owned. So I guess, I guess so. I guess so. And he's only 48. It's random enough, right? Exactly. That's yeah. Right. So if, if I had to go with a weird one, I would be, uh, you know what? It'll be, it'll be the former catcher in Gary Sanchez. That's a great idea. There you go. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. That would, that could be, that could be actually kind of something cool to do. I, I like that idea. Even if you're, pl- you can even do it with, uh, with Cole in your lineup. It's fine to go pitcher versus hitter. in in my opinion, in this spot, I actually like that idea quite a bit. All right. Want to move on? Yeah, let's move on. We'll move on to, uh, yeah, to Baltimore and, and uh, the Royals, unfortunately, this game being in played in KC is not as much fun as if it was played in Baltimore when it was blowing and hot, but now it's hot in, in KC as well. So maybe not so bad. Um, I'm, I'm curious where the ownership does end up on the Royals, because as you all know, and, and look, he's been better this year, but I am always a fan of trying to pick on uh, Jordan Lyles and I would like to do it again today, but I'm seeing double digit ownership on every player at the moment. If that's the case, I don't really have as much interest in doing it. But again, there's not that many things to do on this slate. And on the other side, you have, you know, a pretty low owned in a very similar spot with a higher run total Baltimore side that I think makes maybe a little bit more sense. So uh, I think both these stacks are, are excellent pivot stacks off of uh, off of the Yankees and Braves chalk but they're going to have some, you know, some ownership as well. It's just too big of a slate. So that's why I was into focusing on on some A's that I don't think people are going to play to try to round it out with one of these top stacks. But I'd certainly think these are are two very interesting stacks and I am zero interest in either pitcher. Basically rewind exactly what what Bobby said and put my voice over it. And and it's just almost verbatim what I was going to say. Um, I think Casey Baltimore to me are the, just the ultra natural. I don't want to see if you say pivots, right? But it's different prices, whatever, but yeah. they're the, 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 the ultra obvious teams to go to if you don't want to play, or if you can't play Yankees in Atlanta. And I got to them really, really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's the case, then that's what I think that other people are going to get to them too. So, so you could play those guys, but don't, but don't be, don't be shocked if, if they're not really, really low owned. Um, yeah. Uh, which is why, again, let's talk about kind of like the pivot pyramid. You have the pivot then the pivot off the pivot. Then what you really want, especially if you want to play Cole, is like the pivot off the pivot off the pivot. You know what I mean? So so right. you want to pivot off of KC Baltimore somehow. Um, and uh, but uh, KC Baltimore certainly look like the reasonable options. Um, I try to talk myself into Chris Bubik at 5K. Um, couldn't quite do it. Um <laughs> At least not right now. Yeah. Um, so right now, I just literally everything that you just said. Casey in Baltimore, very natural. Don't expect the world as far as two percent ownerships, but it does. Listen, it does. It does provide routes to, to other things. Like if you like, if you wanted to play, say, Freed Otani, right? Uh, that's 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 not the ultra chalk, right? Then you can mm-hmm. fade Cole. Then then you can play KC or Baltimore or something like that, and then mm-hmm. then then you you're different enough. Yep. And yeah. And, and while I, like I said, while I prefer KC a little bit over Baltimore, the, if, if Baltimore does, it does come in lower owned. I, I think that playing Baltimore certainly makes a lot of sense here. Um, yeah. So that's, these are, these are the natural pivots. Then as we get into the last game, you know, look, small slates, uh, you want to do something different. You can take one of the better offenses in baseball against Otani uh, we know Otani has a wide range of outcomes when he pitches and you're going to get no ownership on a Braves team that I'm sorry, on a, on a Red Sox team that is the second or third best, re, uh, second best real offense, probably on the slate. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting. And I think you're going to have, you know, you're going to get, 
you, you can use guys like Arroyo as a cheap value to, to fit in. Verdugo's not that expensive right now. Um, even Jackie Bradley at the bottom, if you need the savings or whatever, because they're expensive, so they're going to be low owned. They get the bats you really want, the JDs, the Devers, et cetera, the, the, the stories. But I think that is a very viable route. At the same time, I think both pitchers in this game are basically tied with where I have freed, and they're a little bit cheaper, so I might end up doing that. Um, I think Otani is going to be the more popular one. It, we don't know if Trout's going to play yet. So if Trout's out, that Angels lineup is very weak, and Pavetta has looked really good. Um, so I, I, I would probably lean Pavetta over Otani, who I think is going to be much more popular. And Pavetta, I mean, just look at his, his freaking game log. He hasn't he's pitched over six innings and had a quality start, I believe, in all of his last seven starts. Um, in that time, also, he's averaging uh, 28 fantasy points per game. Uh, 29 actually. And uh, I think he's a really solid play, especially if there's no trout. Both. Yeah. I I think, I think, I think Pavetta is, uh, is uh, I think, I I think, I think that this game could be the answer um, in a weird way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Otani is going to be pretty, I mean, they always play him. Um, I, I, th- I think he's going to be more popular than Freed. I think it's going to be Cole and Otani. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, but the Red Sox have been putting up runs, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they don't play Otani as much, you know, I don't know. Um, but Pavetta, I, th- I think your point is well taken. I, ha- I hate to make it all about one guy, but I mean, if Trout's out, if Trout is not playing, I mean, Mm-hmm. Is Pavetta a worse play, really? Than, than, than I guess I guess he's the only guy in this region. Is he a worse play, really, than Otani? How about that? That's 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 another question. No, I I mean you know just based on what he's been doing, he's been better than Otani um, yeah. lately. Um, yeah, he's had some some maybe some easier matchups, but he did have the complete gamer against Houston. Um, I don't know. I, I I'm sort of on the side of of leaning a little bit Pavetta over Otani tonight. Um, just, just also with ownership and everything. And the fact that Pavetta's actually been better than Otani is a good enough reason for me. Um, I'm gonna take a quick look and make sure I'm, I'm not in, inaccurate on that one. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm right. I, I mean, yeah, you see the Otani blowups, like they, they do happen. Um, yep. Otani hasn't put up, he's only had two games over 20 fantasy points, I believe in the last nine starts or something. And now you get Boston and like you have, then you have Pavetta who puts up 20 to, to 40 every game. <laughs> like, right. So I just, I'm on the Pavetta side of this one. Um, I do like that Gary Sanchez idea from before though. I'm just going to keep going back to that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that is pretty, uh, I, I don't, you, you think this slate's big, small enough where you play in the same lineup? You could do it. And, and I don't think it, I, I actually don't think it matters all that much with guys like Cole and Verlander. If you want right. to take somebody against them, usually they're going to get, they're gonna get theirs. <laughs> yeah. They're going to know, even if they give up a couple home runs, they're going to, you know, they'll be, if they do, that just makes them angry and then they put 10 strikeouts. Like, yeah, exactly. um, so I, I, I like, uh, I like the, uh, you know, I, I like the idea of a contrarian Boston stack. I like the idea of an A's mini stack to play with your Braves or Yankees. And that's sort of what I'm going to do on this slate. And I'm going to mostly be pitching uh, Cole, uh, Pavetta, and Freed. Well, let's let's talk about leverage for a second. Um, so your idea of – the idea of playing the Red Sox is, is pretty strong because, again, they, they, they're pretty good in their own right. And they have leverage over who's going to be, who's going to be a chalky pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, the other chalky pitcher, I mean, is Freed and Cole. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you want to – the problem with, with, with trying to get too fancy is, I mean, if you play Pittsburgh, I mean, even if Freed doesn't have a good game, it's not like he gets going to get rocked. <laughs> you know, it's like right. Pittsburgh is not the type of team to rock anybody. So um, I don't think I would go for direct leverage there. Minnesota – I think I'd, I wouldn't mind Minnesota, but I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, ba- I'm, ba- I'm back to maybe playing Dylan Bundy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. No, hey, I mean, when, I, I think it's worth taking a shot. I mean, 
you play a Bundy Pavetta, you can sort of stack the, the Braves in, in, a, in a way and, and do what you want. Um, Talk to me more about this Oakland idea, though. I just think that you got cheap, you have cheap options with guys who have historically been good against lefties. I really like Loriano as a as a especially a DFS player because he has power. He will run. Nobody ever plays him. He's always in that mid upper tier price wise. But then you've got Pinder, Lowry, and Andrus all really cheap, along with possibly Sean Murphy if he's catching tonight. He might get the day off. Um, but so I so I think getting getting a combination of two or three of those guys is certainly viable against Pilkington. Um, so I, I think, I think in, in their low ownership has me interested. So that's what I would try and do. You know, I don't know what you call this, but um, there's gotta be some, some word for it, that, that feeling where you totally fade like the highest run total team, that would be the mm-hmm. reds. And then you see they have three runs. Then you look and you breathe that you're like, Ooh, at least it was all singles. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully it stays that way because uh, yeah. like maybe he's as bad as he is. He didn't. Oh uh, yeah. He could be. Uh, he and, and, we, and we can't, we can't work. We can't root for the, for the pitcher spot to be coming up anymore. So that's uh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Any final thoughts before on this main slate? No, I think we're good. All right. Well, good luck to everybody. I'm going to try to get stuff out. I am going to be around all day tomorrow. I'm going to be gone a couple of days next week. I have to have a procedure done in the hospital. Um, but I, uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I'll, I'll try to get my stuff up today as I have to leave this hotel in the next. So wait, so you're not going to be there for live tonight. For, li- for live tonight, I might have a hard time being there. I'm going to try. Yeah, and if, if, if I make it at all, it would be really late. Just to let everybody know, it would be like at 630. Um, yeah. So don't count on us being live if, uh, tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll do it for now. Yeah, and I'll, but, I, but I will try to get anything out there. I'll be available in Discord and all that stuff. So good luck, okay. everybody. And we'll uh, hopefully see somebody take something down again. Good luck. Sounds good.